All right, folks, welcome to our next workshop. In this workshop, we're going to be talking about jazz vocabulary. So it's going to be a tough one because <laughs> there's so much to cover, uh, but I just want to cover some basic things uh, in this workshop so in the next one we can really get into it and, and make things happen in a, in a very beautiful and profound way. Okay folks, I just want to make sure you heard me say that. This is not going to be easy. Developing jazz vocabulary is one of the hardest things you're going to do in drumming, but the payoff is amazing. You're going to be able to apply these things in every other genre of music there is, okay? So just be patient and trust me, let's go. Now, what I need you to do on this video, and I'm going to include the notation here on the video too, with this theme of jazz vocabulary comes a lot of preliminary work. You have to think in a different way, okay? So uh, a lot of books and methods show you the vocabulary of a particular drummer, right? But what they don't show you is the essence of where that vocabulary came from. And what is the essence of that vocabulary? <laughs> it's rhythmic cycles, okay? Rhythmic cycles. Uh, dude, what's a rhythmic cycle? A rhythmic cycle is a phrase that goes over a pulse or bar line and ends in the same position where it started. Thanks, dude. When you play jazz, you have to have a very deep understanding of rhythm. It's not just independence. It's not just spang-a-lang, spang-a-lang and random hits. What you're doing, how you're interacting, is based a lot off of rhythmic cycles, okay? Now, another thing you have to realize is these cycles change depending on the tempo of the music, okay? The tempo of the music is going to dictate where you hear the cycles and what cycles you use. All these examples we're going to do first are for slow tempos all right so let's just do the exercises first that i need you to do all right so you can embed the cycles in your system all right these need to be memorized as melodies the following phrases are one bar cycles now the first exercise some of you might think this is a quarter note triplet okay if you just think about notation but i want you to get away from thinking about notation and I want you to think about rhythmic melody, okay? Why? Because when you start to, to displace everything and use the different voices, you'll be completely lost if you depend on subdivisions and counting. That's not the way to do it, all right? You have to think rhythmically, melodically. Oh yes, we're stopping again. What does that mean, rhythmically, melodically? It means that when this phrase is embedded in your body and you can sing it with no problem, it becomes a melody, a melody that you can base your vocabulary off of. All right, so the first exercise. With your feet, you're gonna play half notes, okay? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, now with your hand, or with both hands, however you like. We're just going to take on the snare drum right now. You're going to play the figure. Exercise one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Okay, so counting 
like that is important too. So what this exercise does, it gives you layers, layers so that you can hear the cycle, all right, in, in a, a deeper way. If you just count them and, you know, count triplets, one, ta -ta, two, ta -ta, three, that's not really going to help you too much, all right? So let's take the next exercise, same thing. It's the same phrase, but displaced, okay, by an eighth note. Oh, uh, one, two, three, four. All right, you might want to try it with the the, the uh, ride and the snare just to get used to doing that type of thing. So, one, two, three, four. Now, the way you adapt this language into jazz is like this. You're going to play a basic two and four on the hi-hat and just a typical ride pattern. Okay, and the left hand is going to play the figures for now. All right. So what can you do with that? You can do a whole lot. Now, just let me show you. Besides this, you can, of course, put it on the bass drum, on the hi-hat, you know, in different ways around the toms. But what I really want to get across is the deeper phrasing that you can accomplish with this. So if you take four voices, for example, let's just take rim, hi-hat, hi-tom, and bass drum. Okay? Watch this. One, two, three. Okay, what's happening there is that you create a four over three uh, motif, okay? One, two, three, four, or... Okay, that you're singing along the fours with the melodies. Now, if you leave a beat out of that, it can sound very interesting as well. So, one, two, three, four. All right, so you see I'm leaving one or two of the notes out and continuing the phrase so it gives an, a more interesting uh, or another very interesting motif. All right. Now, some things, other things you can do like this. One, two, three, four. Okay, so it's really endless the amount of stuff you can do. Now, the next group of figures, some of you might want to think of this as a half note triplet. I again advise against thinking in subdivisions and instead think of rhythmic melodies. All right, you're going to see why when I give you some examples of what you're doing here. So, this next phrase has four variations or melodies, okay? And this is it. Okay, the next one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. The next one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four.
And the last one. Okay, so you see they are very distinct and the more you can break up rhythm that way, the more options you're going to have for vocabulary. It's very important to know about rhythm, especially in jazz. You know, this is a, a, a very expressive uh, a genre. You're going to need all the tools you can possibly get to express yourself at the deepest level. All right, so what can you do with these things? I'll show you. Uh, you can do like this. I'm taking the big phrase and doing stuff in between, all right? The thing is, it's, it's all got to be very clear in your head so that you can use them how you want, all right? Let's go on to the next set of cycles. These cycles are what you're going to use when the tempo is medium to fast, okay? And this is the three bar cycle. Now the reality is that this topic requires its own whole series of videos. It's absolutely massive. What we're trying to accomplish here is to give you an overview of the things we need to know. The realization step. This is the beginning. The three bar cycle is a game changer for drummers. Okay, There's so much material that you can play with this cycle and in fact it's one of the most common cycles used in uh, uh, music from the United States all right so you must learn it it's it's a uh, it's an absolute must without this knowledge your jazz drumming is gonna sound flat and square all the greatest players on earth use this, from Tony Williams to Elvin to Vinny Kaliuta, everybody. As I mentioned before, it's important to think of variations as melodies. In the three bar cycle, you're going to find three melodies. So, in jazz, you're going to take medium to fast tempos, okay? Since it's a longer cycle, as you see, it doesn't resolve in one bar. It resolves in three bars, uh, as you're going to see, okay? One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, one, four, two, three, one, four, two, three, one, one, two, Okay, you're going to notice we have a slightly different way to practice this. You're going to play the hi-hat on two and four, and the figures you're going to play on the snare drum until you get used to this. That is the first melody of the three bar cycle. The second melody just moves over by one eighth note. So it sounds like this. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, the third melody, third melody, moves over again by an eighth note. One, two, three, four, one. Two, three, one, two, three. All right, now, you might say to yourself, what the heck is going on, right? What, what is that stuff? So this is what it's going to sound like. Uh, you might be able to get a better grasp on it if I put the right in there and play this with the left hand. Okay, one, two, three, four, one. The 
the second melody. Okay, the third melody. Alright, so I want you to do that this way. Just the ride playing quarter notes and the hi-hat on two and four and the cycle with the left hand. Okay, that's just for starters. Alright. It's very important that you do this because this is going to be like the birthplace of your vocabulary. All right. A lot of people try to teach you, you know, how to groove in bebop, how to have swing by singing bebop lines, but they don't give you the essence. And the essence of that is the three bar cycle. Okay. So now just let me play a little bit for you so you can get kind of an idea of what's going on. Everything I'm playing there is based off the three bar cycle, okay? What you hear on the ride cymbal is the three bar cycle, where it lives, okay? Where it lives in jazz is on the ride cymbal. So my concept, when I play, everything I play on the ride kind of bleeds down onto the rest of the kit, all right? That's how I access the vocabulary. I don't come from here up so much. You can. But I like to come from here down. And everything I play off of here comes down off the rest of the kit. Okay? You've got the basic exercises. Let's do those. Okay? First, it's very important to get this down. And in the next workshop, we're going to check out up-tempo jazz and see how the three-bar cycle works there. Hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please contact me. Don't hesitate to write. All right. See you in the next one.